The at value annotation in Spring is an essential way to get values from property files in your Spring Boot applications. It's not the only way, but it's one of the most widely used ways. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you three tricks with the at value annotation that you really should have in your arsenal when you're working with configuration in Spring Boot. So let's check it out. So here I have a simple controller which has a greeting method, a slash greeting URL, which returns a greeting message that I'm getting from the property file. Okay, so there's a my.greeting specified in my property file mapped to hello world. Now, there are a bunch of different ways in which you can get properties like this. This is one possible syntax. You can have this dollar and curly braces and then the property inside the curly brace. But basically, what you get with the at value is, is just a string. So you, let's say you have that value here and then you pass in some string, some static message. So whatever you put over here, private string, this property, this member variable is gonna be assigned the value some static message. It's gonna be literally assigned that value. Okay, this is not super helpful because you're not really making it externalized. The whole point of at value is to have your configuration externalized and here the string is literally in the code, which is not good, but this will work. This will assign the string value to this property. Okay, so this is one way to do it. The other way is what we saw over here. You put the property value there and then it's gonna take that value from your property file. It could be anywhere. It could be in your jar. It could be externalized. It could be command line argument, a system variable, or even an external config server, which we will explore uh, later down this series. But however you put it, you can get the value of the property by using this dollar curly brace and then using the property. Now, there are certain situations where you will need a default value when the value doesn't exist. Now, I have this my.greeting over here. Now my dot greeting might not be available as a property value. Now what happens if I don't have the my dot greeting property and I'm gonna start this application. You notice here, it actually gives an error. There is an application run failed and it was an, there was an error creating the name, bean with the name greeting controller because injection of auto wide dependencies failed. Could not find, resolve the placeholder my dot greeting. So this is literally treating it as if uh, equivalent to if a bean is not available. When you do dependency injection and a bean doesn't exist, it the spring container fails to start because it was not able to resolve the dependency. It's pretty much taken to that same level of seriousness. If a property value doesn't exist, the container literally fails to start. Now, what if you don't want that to happen? What if you want to provide like a default value a fallback value so that you don't actually cause the container to fail to start up when a property doesn't exist. But you can provide default values here by using the syntax colon and then your default value here, okay? So this is basically your property key and then you have a colon and then what is the value that it needs to take if this property key does not exist? Okay, now if I were to save this and run this again, it is not going to fail and it is going to, when I access it, it's going to show me that it's picked the default value. Now if I access slash greeting, you notice here, it's picked the default value. So this is handy sometimes when you would like for some configuration to exist, but you don't care if it doesn't exist, you already have a default. Another handy trick with at value is when you want to have like a list of values, okay? So let's say you have a property which is like a series of values. Let me actually paste this thing over here. I'm going to put back hello world and uh, let's add something like this. My.list.values equals one comma two comma three, okay? It's basically a list which is comma separated and you want this list of values to be used in your code. You can of course take this as is and then comma separate it, split it by comma and then parse it and convert it to a list. But you don't need to do all that. What you can do is do something like this. I'm gonna create this value annotation which takes in the property like before. And if I were to create a string member variable here, it is gonna substitute the property as is with commas and all. 
but I can actually do something like this here. I can say my value, the variable type, is a list of string. Now what Spring Container is gonna do is it's gonna look at this property and say, hey, this looks like a list. It is separated by commas. So it's gonna comma separate it and then create this list for you, instantiate the list and assign it to list values. Isn't that awesome? So let's say I print this out and I say uh, plus static message plus list values and uh, refresh the server, refresh the page. Here you see hello world is coming from my property file. Some static message is coming from this guy over here, static message, which is literally being copied over. And this is an actual list of values, which is, uh, we have just executed the two string method of that, which is basically printing that list within square brackets, one comma two comma three, but this is actually a list that you can parse. So this is very handy when you have like a series of things that you wanna get, and you don't wanna have to mess with parsing and splitting and all that stuff yourself. It works not only with lists, it also works with key value pairs. Now we know that this property system itself is a key value pair, but you can have a key have a value which itself is a key value pair, okay? Let me give you an example. So let's say I have my DB values uh, equals, and then I provide a key value pair here, okay? Connection string with colon, and then I provide a value here in single quotes which is HTTP colon slash slash, I'm gonna put some dummy value here. Um, username, okay. So here is my DB values property, which is basically a bunch of values that I will need to connect to my database, okay? So it has connection string, username, and password. Now what if I wanna have this assigned to my member variable in greetings controller, right? So let's say it's at value, and then I use the dollar curly brace syntax again and provide the DB values. Now this is gonna take that value literally as a string. But what I can do is have this evaluated as an expression, okay? The way to do this is by using the hash symbol and then surround this with curly braces. I know this sounds weird, but go with me here. What hash does is treat what's in the curly brace after it as a spring expression language and evaluate it. So there is this whole literature around spring expression language, it's called SPEL. And you can do a whole lot with this. You can actually call methods and access properties of other beans right here, okay? I'm not gonna go into so much detail, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying I want this to be evaluated and assigned to my property. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a private uh, map of string and string. DB values. All right, and let me actually paste this as well, plus DB values, and restart. If I refresh this, here you see I'm getting that object right here as a map. Okay, I can access each element of the map and you know, it saves you all the parsing and everything that you wanna do. So well, there is one aspect to it, which is basically creating this yes, key value pairs, making it a flat list, but then you also have this power to use lists, for example, or use a map, for example, and group your related properties together so that you don't have like a hundred keys to mess with. You can consolidate and you can group it and organize your keys and values better. And again, remember that this applies not just for keys and values in your properties file, it applies in a whole lot of different mechanisms in which we're gonna be configuring our microservices that we're gonna cover in this series. So those were the three features of the add value annotation that you really should know. First, providing a default message if you don't want your application to fail when you have like an optional 
value that you're looking up from a property file. Second, managing lists. And third, managing maps of values. There are a few more that the at value can do. So I definitely recommend you check out the Java doc for the at value annotation to look up some of the more advanced stuff that it can do. But basically it has a whole lot of power with the spring expression language that you can bring into what it looks up from your um, from your configuration. But like I said, while it's versatile, it's not the only way to look up configuration from property files. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you a slightly more powerful way and a little bit of a convenient way to look up lots of configuration values from property files together in bulk. So let's check it out.